Hey, Mike. Hello. <laughs> What's going on? Nothing. Stop. Hey, Chris. Say hi to me first. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him first. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, she likes me best. Uh -huh. <laughs> she likes me best. So what's going on? Nothing. Nothing. Just in the office today working. <laughs> oh. Not much going on. Yeah, I've got a few things going on. How'd your listing appointment go? Uh, good. I listed it. And uh, it's going to be, I got put it in today for coming soon. They want oh, okay. me to hold up and putting it in. So it's going in today. Oh, okay. That wrote uh, an offer yesterday. 337000 cash deal. Oh, wow. Cash is king, man. Those are great when you get those. So I have a question. When you have a cash deal and if it's like in the subdivision, do they require you to have a certain credit score to like be in that subdivision? No. Because I saw something posted cash, on a man. Facebook. I, I saw something posted on a Facebook group. No, Someone had a cash you, deal. You're doing it in from your Zoom account? Are we starting say? now? No, I said someone in a Facebook group, they had a cash deal and um, they he got denied because he had like a 450 credit score and they required them to have like a 700 or something to be in that, I guess. I on the air. Wow. I was wondering if you ever heard anything like that. No. no, that'd be a first for me. Oh. <laughs> that would be a first. <laughs> That would be a first, 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 for sure. It was in another state. I don't know what state it was, but I'm in this Facebook group with all different wow. agents all over the U.S. So they be posting different stuff in the group. Wow, interesting. Cool. I never heard of that before. I want to learn oh, okay. something all the time. <laughs> learn something every day. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's all about. Remember, if you need to get up, go to the Hey, Randy. Hey, hey how are you guys doing this morning? Good. Mm -hmm. Audrey, Julie, Stacy, Joy, Thunder Kitty's here. <laughs> oh, help me. Give it 
maybe one more minute. We've got our panel, Mr. Mike Lefebvre and Ms. Joy Gross. Um, that knocked it out in 2020. So if anybody needs to borrow a little money, man, Joy's just loaded right now. So. <laughs> no, not quite. <laughs> I would tell you to call Mike, but he's uh, he won't give you a penny. So he's, That's right. Tight. Uh, he's tight. <laughs> Julie, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are y'all? Everybody. Good. We're in the real estate world, so it's awesome. I'll see you guys if y'all sit there and see Antoinette. Tony. Tony's one of our new agents that came through our real estate class and has joined us. Um, so y'all say congratulations and welcome to, to Tony. Hopefully she's Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey Tony. I am uh I'm hanging tight and making best friends with Tony because she's maybe my parole officer one of these days. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get in that situation. I need her recommendation. So uh, Tony, we're tight, aren't we? Yeah, we good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're going to start. Uh, I was going to share a little bit. Um, we'll probably have a few more agents jump in. Uh, but one thing that has been good is we record these and then we share them and, and boost them out there. And a lot of our agents are watching the videos. Uh, what we wanted to look at today was uh, trying to get some insight uh, from a couple of our top producing agents from last year, uh, which is Mike Lefebvre and Joy Gross. And I mean, during the pandemic, uh, their numbers just soared and had a great year and they worked their rear ends off. And and most part, most of us were busy um, and just want to kind of bring them in, uh, probably have a little question and answer after a little while, but I'm going to kind of pop them with some questions um, that may help us out a little bit. Just wanted to kind of give insight for some of you new agents, some of that has been there for a little while. And we may even need to teach Gene, uh, one of the old dogs, a new trick. So, so uh, Gene, how's everything at the beach, buddy? It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Okay, well, good deal. You got sunny skies and a beach down there, so it's all got to be good. So, uh, so all anyway. is well. Okay, all right. Well, let's let's get back and get this thing started. Um, Mike, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, and, and I was going to say this is Richard Eaton was going to be on this as well. Richard had a tremendous year. Uh, he even had, he did so well. He even had um, prostate cancer surgery and in, in the middle of it and still sold a ton of real estate. And so uh, Richard's back up coming in the office every day and, and back pushing his business. So, so uh, he survived, but he has two closings this morning and had to cancel and get off of this. And so uh Mike, and, and, uh, and I'll let you answer first, Mike, but Joy as well. Is last year we faced, you know, we woke up and boom, there's a pandemic and everybody's shutting down. We're having to wear a mask and nobody knew what we were going to do. And um, I know I kind of woke up and we started doing some training and, and events. And, and I saw a glimpse in our market that was not going to slow down. And, you know, I just wanted to kind of ask Mike, starting with you, is Kind of what did you do last year? Uh, anything different to kind of reorganize your business, try to figure out how to keep selling real estate? I actually looked at the pandemic as uh, an advantage to be able to um, maybe be the uh, an agent that can get people into a home uh, a lot quicker than uh, some agents who sit back and feel that the uh, pandemic should slow them down and they're staying home and they really don't want to get out. Real estate's a lot of work, no matter what you do. And pandemic is just another obstacle sometimes that something like that, you just have to overcome. And you overcome it by working harder, uh, making calls to people that you know, people that uh, from church or people from different sources that, that you might know of. And you talk to these folks and, and ask them, do you know anybody that's thinking about selling their home soon? Do you know anybody that's looking to purchase a home soon? And you'd be surprised how many of these people uh, 
come up with names that help you in, in selling real estate. So basically I just worked harder. I worked harder on the phones. I worked harder in, in communicating with, with people and uh, it brought, brought its rewards. Great. Joy, turn your camera on your mic. I don't want to echo off of his. If I do, it's going to echo. We're hearing you, Chris. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. There you are. Okay. I'm moving around. I'm sorry. <laughs> Join us a tour of your beautiful house. So that, that's a... Oh, goodness. <laughs> don't look at it. It's a minute. Okay. Can y'all hear me? There you go. We can hear you now. Okay. So, um, do I have the same question as Mike? You do. Okay. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> uh, yeah. Is really with the pandemic coming on, what did you do? What did you think uh, to kind of reorganize your business or figure out how to keep pushing the business with everybody else being scared of dying, I guess? So. Yeah. Yeah. So, the pandemic was crazy. I mean, I, I remember the day, you know, that my kids were at school. I have three kids. Um, they are 17, 15, and 12. So at that time, it was 16, 14, and 11. So we, it was crazy. I mean, I had a lot of deals going. Um, January came in great. So 2020 came in beautifully, you know, with real estate. And so um, I think when I when the pandemic hit, I think I may have had about 10 or 12 houses under contract and I lost three in like a week. Um, the pandemic, you know, happened. And so it was really scary. You know, I didn't know my kids were at home trying to do the homeschool virtual nightmare. But one thing I did do was I kept my buyers and sellers engaged. Um, we didn't stop talking. As a matter of fact, being at home gave me more time to talk and more time to reach out to other buyers that were still interested but afraid, you know, to go in people's houses or whatever. And so I kept masks and gloves in my car and um, hand sanitizer. So I give it to them, you know, when we did do showings. But throughout that time when we really weren't out showing houses so much and people were really afraid. I guess that was probably like March, maybe some of April. I was on the phone all the time, um, just connecting. And then also the interest rates were starting to drop. So that was another thing that I was putting in the buyer's ears. All those buyers that called me in January and said, this is my year I'm gonna buy. I definitely connected with them so they would know, hey, these interest rates are in the twos. I've never seen that before. And I've been a realtor for 11 years. I've never seen that. So um, that's pretty much what I did. It was just, you know, kept everybody engaged. Awesome. You know, and I, I kind of, we were digging in and teaching back in March last year. And, and I felt like it was a great opportunity and gave you a reason to call somebody. Like Mike mm -hmm. said earlier, your people at the church or whatever is uh you know and and we're as salesmen are annoying at times so it's like hey you're calling somebody the last thing they want to think about is selling or buying a house and and so it really gave us the opportunity to get in and just call check and see how they're doing and and then once hey everything's good and they're not freaked out throw the question to them you know somebody needs to sell a house and so uh you know i thought it was prime uh the good thing was first of the year march april everybody was really just learning about it so the the uh, fear of dying was not on us all at that point. And so you guys sit there and look in June, July, death starts going up and, you know, it's like, Hey man, we're all going to die. But you guys were still out there pushing the box. And, and uh, uh, how did you comfort the sellers uh, or the selling agents? And, and I guess if they were listings already there, they were welcome to let you in. Uh, but even getting your buyers at that point, and Joy, you can answer this one quick, anything different in the middle of this pandemic in July, August, as it really got worse and the political craziness that was going on, what did you do to keep your 
customers uh, or your clients more comfortable uh, with still looking or selling houses? I know this may sound weird, but I didn't focus on it. Um, our goal was to buy or sell a house. I made sure that they were aware, you know, of the precautions that needed to be taken when they were looking at a house or when people were coming into their house. But it wasn't our main topic. Um, I kept focused on them, you know, and I actually felt like that may have been like an outlet because, you know, you couldn't avoid the news, you know, you couldn't avoid the deaths, you couldn't avoid everything that was going on with it. But if you got this dream of getting the house, let's talk about that. Let's focus on that. And so really that's what, you know, we focused on. I did not, um, I told them to put their gloves on when we go look at a house. I had gloves, put your mask on and let's go. You know, I, I made sure that I said, I'll open the doors. Don't you open any doors. I'll touch all that and let's do it. And so that's what we did. Mike? Yeah, basically I did the same thing. I mean, carried gloves with me and extra masks and uh, really just told them everything was going to be okay. Just cover up and let's go in and take a look. And it was real simple. I mean, that was it. It was a great excuse to tell them, you got to leave your kids at home. We can't have kids in the yes. house. So, uh, yes. Now, now that part them. I loved. I was like, you yeah. can't bring your parents. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I showed a house early on and they bring a kid and just let them run through. They're opening drawers and, and so mm -hmm. like, no more kids out here. So, mm -hmm. so that was that awesome. Was peaceful. <laughs> uh, and, and I liked your answer of not focusing on it is to where everybody else was focused. And, uh, you know, the smart thing you guys did was push your clients to go ahead and look where everybody else may have been scared to go out. It kind of gave you an opportunity. I guess you feel like that, you know, Hey, we can get out there and find some houses and, and, mm -hmm. uh, because the listings were limited, but the, you know, the people searching were not as comfortable getting out there. So you, you guys were smart and still just pushing and pushing uh, to get it done. Uh, I would like to ask the question, most everybody wants to know, uh, agents looking for businesses, where did your business come from? Where did you find your clients? Did you buy leads or did they just work your network? Or uh, we'll start with Mike on this one. You know, I buy some leads, but I don't get much from from purchasing. Most of it is word of mouth referrals. Um, I'm the type of guy that'll sit in a, in a coffee shop and make sure I've got my sport coat on with my realtor pin on and I'll be doing paperwork. You know, I sold probably six deals last year just sitting in Starbucks or McDonald's drinking coffee and people come up and see my realtor pin and go, are you a realtor? <laughs> yeah, and I picked up five or six that way last year. I look for different avenues to, to pick up people. Uh, that's one of them. The other one, of course, is, is referrals. Calling past clients, asking them how their house is, how are things going, how's the family, and then do you know anybody? And it goes on from there. But that's basically where I get most of my my deals. George? Um, referrals, past clients, definitely. Um, I do purchase leads also, um, so I do that. And Facebook, uh, I'm on Facebook. And so my Facebook you know, page is about real estate. It's not about me, it's not about my kids. I mean, I'm just not that type of person. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's just not me. So clients see their friends, you know, and their friends see friends. And I get a ton of business from Facebook, from Facebook referrals. Yeah. And you guys have been in this a long time. And sometimes, and I was telling somebody the other day, they were asking me and I'm like, you know, I just call friends and check in on them and referrals and past business. And, and it's amazing how you can pick up business that way. And so for some of the newer agents, you know, everybody's looking for ways of picking up business. And do y'all agree to work your network, work your family, friends, church members, oh, call them, definitely. just stay in touch with them? Yeah, yeah. most definitely. You got to work that. If you're not yeah. working that, you're not doing your job because a lot of your 
leads come from that source. Yeah. Right, right. That's true. And, you know, I think sometimes with real estate, people think it's like a magic potion that you get and then you drink that and then you get all this business. And it's not like that. Um, it's a job. You know, it's a job just like any other job, except it's a little harder because you're not guaranteed every two week paycheck. So you have to get out here and get your name known. You got to make it happen. You got to make it happen. I mean, you can't, it, you can't sit down. You know, you really can't. Once you do that, you're going to lose your business. Right. Well, wait a minute. You guys left a good paying job probably somewhere to take the easy life out selling real estate and making money. So you're not telling me you're up. I sold my first house back in 1986. So I don't know what a good paying job is other than real estate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's not just get up and it comes to you and you find it. And, uh, I, I was watching a old Mike Ferry, you know, Tom, everybody knows Tom Ferry. And I was watching Mike Ferry video the other day. And it's funny because he was in a suit and looked look more like a Southern Baptist preacher doing a Sunday morning show. And, and his content was the same back 20 years ago as what Tom's teaching this day and time. But he, he talked about how many agents come into this business thinking they're going to make a killing. It's just going to fall in their lap that they don't realize how much work it's involved in doing this. And so um, I want to kind of share what your day looks like, how much work it takes, Joy, start off. It is work. I mean, honestly, especially during the pandemic, I work seven days a week. I don't recommend that, you know, to people, you know, um, even on Sunday, you know, we did church online and then by two o'clock I was out the door. Um, but that was just because of what the market was requiring, you know, at that time. Um, I keep in contact with my clients, even when we're on contract, you know, you're going to hear from me two to three times a week. That's just, you know, you have to maintain that. And once you lose that, then it's over. The other thing I've heard that people have said about the way that I work with clients is that I'm not an all about the money agent. A lot of times, you know, real people think that realtors are just greedy, like car salesmen, you know, just all about the money. You just want to make a dime. I'm not like that. I'm very honest. If we're looking at a house and I don't think it's a good house, I'm going to tell them, you know, I hate it. This is, this is not good for what you're trying to do. <laughs> I mean, I'm just honest like that. And I think that has really helped a lot, um, just the communication. You know, there are a lot of agents out here, a ton of agents out here, and we have a lot of competition. And I think when we remember that and we desire to do something different, then we can have success. But most people think agents are just money hungry, want to make a dime, you know, not caring about their needs. And we have to let them know that we care about their needs. Awesome. Mike? You know, too many agents think that it's a nine to five job. You know, nine to five is when everybody's working. So from nine to five is when you got to lay your groundwork for when you can actually get with your client. Most of the time you can't get with your client until after five or on the weekend. So like Joy said, it's a seven day a week job. I start out my day, um, going through my email. After I go through my email, then I start my calls. I will make my rounds of calls that I make to friends, relatives, friends, and people I know. And uh, just ask them how they're doing, try to get appointments that way. Um, and then I'll go from there here to the office, try to do paperwork that I've got to get done for deals that I've got going. Um, and then when five o'clock rolls around, uh, I'm out showing. I'm out showing houses. I, last night, I, I think I got home at 9.30 last night, which is typical for me. I got home at 9.30 last night, wrote a contract, cash deal actually, 3.37. So I was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, it's work. You know, it's a lot of work. To be successful in this business, you have to have to work yeah it's a lot it's non-stop <laughs> so, 
the, the next answer is, you know, you got your client, you're trying to help them and work with them in difficult times is, uh, how are you guys finding the houses? You know, because everybody's got buyers. And I told somebody the other day, I said, don't spend another dime on a buyer lead. <laughs> it, it's, uh, I know. You know, mm-hmm. if somebody's selling listing leads, buy them all. And so, uh, so any little insight without giving away too many secrets and, you know. On, uh, well, you know, one of the things that I do is I keep track of all the coming soons. Yeah. And then uh, I, I have a, a calendar to be able to know when they're coming up so that I'm the first one to be able to say, Hey, we want to see your house. If -hmm. you're not one of the first ones in the door that first day, you're out. Yeah. And so you got to be on top of it. That's, that's probably one of the biggest things that I do to make sure that I'm, I'm seeing houses. Uh, The other things that I've done is, uh, is like asking people, you know, hey, do you know somebody that wants to sell their house? And they'll say, well, yeah, you know, I heard he's putting his on the market down the street here. Uh, so I know that's coming up soon. So call agents, talk to other agents. Basically, that's it. Yeah. Ms. Joy? That's pretty much the same thing I'm doing. Um, you have to be the first to schedule. Um, one thing I do is I have my buyers on the automated search you know through the mls so they get the listings you know automatically when they come out if i just feel like you can't you can't not do that um because we can't constantly look at the mls to see what has come out every minute of the day and homes are literally coming out you know every minute and so when you miss that and they're sending you something that they've seen on zillow three days after it's been out, well, it may still show active, but it's already got 20 offers on it. So um, like Mike was saying, you know, get those automated searches and then I tell them, let me know if you want to see it. And then we schedule the coming soons like weeks in advance just to make sure that we don't miss anything. And I also do, it's not that many of them as it used to be, but I also do for sale by owner. Um, don't rule them out. Um, they're not the easiest to deal with, but in this market, it's worth it. What about new construction? Have y'all focused or sell much new construction? This year has been more than ever because it's been so frustrating. <clears throat> um, just, you know, the bidding wars and all of that. And so when I have a buyer that wants to do it, we're on it. So you know, I have two of DR Horton right now because, you know, the market is limited. You know, it's a limited homes out there. So new construction, we don't have to do a bid war. We don't have to do multiple offers. You know, you go in, you get what you want, and you just wait for some months for it to close. But yeah. I don't, I definitely am enjoying that. Yeah, I'm seeing a, an up tick in that as well you know new construction is the uptick right now because people are tired of being told they're they didn't accept your offer <laughs> so now they look towards you know new build and i've got um i've got three of those coming up and i've i think i had three already this year so that'll be six six homes that are new builds this year for me I know listing new homes, <clears throat> I've got a lot of network of agents that call me and they're smart enough to know, you know, they can see what's in the MLS that we have, but they're asking me what's coming. And so to me, that's the, the way to buy homes right now is not just what's being built, but asking, being in tight with the, uh, with the real estate agents at the communities and knowing what they're about to start. Because you're right, the good thing is if your client falls in love with a certain house plan, it's not like that's the only one they're building if it gets sold. So you can pick it out on another lot. So so y'all recommend this year with the limited listings that's out there is the more and more people push new construction? I'm pushing yeah, more that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's so much competition. Um, I think, I don't know any, many of the people on this Zoom call, but the way that people are writing offers now 
is just unheard of. I mean, waving home inspections. Um, that's the new thing here that's really big, especially in Shelby County, where they're waving the home inspections. Um, agreeing to pay, you know, the difference if it doesn't appraise, you know, I mean, it's hard. And so really with new construction, you don't have to deal with that. It's a lot more peace there. <clears throat> and that's why, you know, I'm doing that because some things just for me just goes against my morals, my ethical, you know, morals, you know, waiving your home inspection you know, you know, when you got sight unseen offers, you know, that are great <laughs> cash, what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a lot you can do. So oh, that's the last two I heard this week was waiving the home inspection and paying the difference of the appraisal. Yeah, not good. And not I heard good. that this week. Not good. I heard where somebody was going to pay the difference above whether it appraised or not and uh, and I wouldn't recommend anybody ever waive up, you know, I might would waive the, uh, or put a zero amount in there, what the seller has to pay for, you know, any repairs, but I'm like, Hey, we still want to report and a way out, but people want to sell their homes. It's, it's just, uh, I'm like you guys, y'all, y'all have too much, uh, reputation to, to blow it on selling yeah, somebody. You can't, throw that, you can't throw that away. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've been amazed to sit there and, and watch with the shortage of listings out there um, that Mike keeps coming in having closings and Joy keeps having class. I see those when the you know closings come through. I'm like, how are they getting these things? So, so uh, you know, and that's the key. And that's really where the work comes in is most of us know people that wants to buy or, uh, and, and most of us, you know, it's like, hey, if we can find people that wants to list, um, then that's that's like gold. I'm like, I'm, I'm going out there and would take that all day long, but um, just getting it buyers are too much work for me. I'm, I'm enjoying being on the listing side. Uh, the cool thing on, on new construction is you can actually sit there uh, and sell 10 or 12 houses. The bad thing is you're not going to get paid for six months, but then it kind of gives you a little chance to sit back and breathe a little bit, but you still have to work the new construction because I've seen those deals fall through. Charnessa called me the other day that, um, she thought she lost a deal because they did their final their walk or they did their initial walkthrough and the house was nowhere near ready. And so her clients were frustrated and wanted out of the contract. And, you know, and I just said, just calm them down a little bit, tell them that's just new construction. And so, um, so that's something I've got to step up the next new construction class that I did a couple of weeks ago and weather kind of turned, I was going to take some people out, but learning to sell new construction and realize what the builders are going through. Uh, you know, don't let them get away with anything, but our, our, our people have to have a little more patience, you know, with, with what the builders are going through as well. But it's still a good solid source of homes to come. Uh, I'm working right now. One thing that keeps me busy is I've got Roush Coleman, um, uh, Smith Douglas. We've got uh, Valor Homes and then Daryl Horton. But several of these builders, their forecast is really in our market are the smaller priced homes with lumber where they are uh, and with interest rates, they're gonna tick up, which is actually a, it's a good thing for our market because that's kind of a, a, a sign of a stronger marketplace out here for us. And, you know, so it may adjust a little bit, but if your clients are well qualified and income, a little tick is not gonna, you know, hurt their business, but most of the builders are, looking at cash in because I'm looking at land in Tuscaloosa, you know, Harpersville, all the outline area, Pell City's taken off, uh, mainly because they're having to have a 35 to $45,000 lot uh, to build their little 220, 250 homes. And, and so that's where I'm really seeing a, a push in the market. So if you're not finding something in town, you know, kind of look out in the Pell Cities and Tuscaloosas because that's where a lot of movement's going. Uh, and, and a lot of the problem with Birmingham is just our topography, man. It makes it tough to do some developments and stuff. So, so uh, but, um, all right, uh, Mike, I, I'm going to kind of sit here. We're 30 minutes in. I'm going to let you kind of tell us your recommendation to agents. And, you know, these guys that sit here that's going to watch this video after we send it out, what do you recommend agents to be doing every day? 
every day. Well, you got to make your calls every day. You should spend a half hour at least every morning or afternoon calling people you know. Um, then the other thing you need to do is to um, call on uh, cold calls. I'm known to go knock on doors from time to time uh, around my neighborhood, people that know me, um, talking to them, asking them if they're looking at selling sometime soon, or if they know somebody that's going to be selling soon. Um, every day, you just need to get out and work and rub shoulders with people and, and, and talk business. That's what it's about. Awesome. Joey? Um, same with Mike. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. It's me. Same with Mike. Uh, making your phone calls. I know that you think when you first start that I don't know who wants to buy a house. You know, nobody knows me. You know, but you have contacts in your phone, and I think that making connections with those contacts. Uh, I would say if you're a new agent, everybody that knows you and does not know you should know that you're an agent. And the ones that may not really know you are on social media. I, I just got on, I've been on Instagram a while, but I just got my page updated or whatever. I don't really do much on there, but um, Facebook is amazing. And so if you're that type of, well, you need to be that type of person um, because you may connect with old classmates. I talked to a classmate that I hadn't talked to since high school. <laughs> I mean, I have not heard her voice or anything since the 90s. So, and she wants to buy a house. So you have to make those connections. Let people know as much as you can. Now you can't just go into places like you could before COVID and, you know, drop off food or whatever, drop off a basket or whatever. You can't do that. But you can get from your bed, you can sit there and get on the internet and let everybody know, hey, I'm a realtor. Anybody want to buy or sell? Another thing that I do is you have to make connections with lenders. So if you have a loan officer and you're sending him or her a lot of business, then they need to return the favor. And so you make sure that they know, hey, you know, send me some referrals. And also, the one thing I found is, and Charnessa taught me this, we send out a text. We'll send out like a mass text to anybody. All You're right? the one that's doing that. Doggone it. <laughs> Get all <laughs> these mass texts all the time. Yep, yeah, we're the one. We're the one saying, hey, got a great new product, no down payment, whatever, whatever. Call me or text me. And that works. It really, really works. So those are just things that, you know, you can do to up your business, you know, get your name out there. But those people in your contacts, because if they don't want to buy a house, they may know someone that wants to buy a house. So that's what I recommend. Tarnessa's about to work Charles Feldner to death, bless his heart. So. I know, poor Charles. <laughs> Mike. He's learning, though. <laughs> He's learning. Mike, you can answer that. Well, you know, it's it, it's just all about work. I mean, it, it, that's the whole thing. It's a work ethic. You get up and you do your job every day. I mean, it's I, I don't know what else to tell you. It's, you find every avenue you can, every avenue you can, and you work it to death. That's right. You agree with the lender? Can I chime in? Mm -hmm. No, no time for questions. Well, I've either. tried to chime in about four times and you won't shut your mouth, so hush. Well, I've got a question and answer. <laughs> Ask your okay. question, Julie. I'll ask the question, a question and answer time. I'll be the good student and wait. Now, let me ask Mike, you know, and, and Mike, we agree the lender helps you out. And so, you know, everybody needs a good lender that's going to work with them. Um, and so, um, and, and kind of my last question to ask you guys is with 2021, last year, this time we were sitting there facing pandemics and, you know, it was just hitting us and, 
the good thing now is that it looks like the pandemic's dropping off a good bit. People are still scared of getting us in their houses. Um, you know, most of the studies say that listings are going to loosen up a little bit. Uh, the fear is people selling their homes is can they find a home? And so, uh, you know, it's like, hey, the catch 22 there. But um, with the limitation of listings and rates going up a little bit, what are you doing for 2021 to plan to kind of help keep your business going? Joy? Well, I am in contact with, um, with lenders that are very knowledgeable about the market and the forecast. And so I am telling those buyers that are kind of sitting, you know, just waiting to kind of see, I'm like, look, you need to get out here because it's very likely before the end of the year or before the summer, you know, rates will be back, you know, steady in the threes. I mean, right now they're still in the twos, that's great, but who knows where it's going to be in, you know, three or four months. So that is a pressure that I am applying to my buyers for my sellers. I'm just telling them, you know, the market is good right now. You're going to walk away with a great amount of money that you would not have walked away with two years ago. And I don't know if it would be like that next year. So, you know, get it while it's good. And I'm, I'm very vocal about that. I have two listed appointments this week, and they already know that we've already had that question on the phone. I mean, we had that conversation on the phone about this is your time. You know, this is a time, and I'm telling them on the phone, I'm looking at their house, I'm pretty much giving them, you know, some comps over the phone and then emailing them to show them this is what you can possibly walk away with. And that money excites people. <laughs> it, does. it does. It excites people. Mike? Well, it's... Uh... Pretty much what she's saying. I mean, that's that's all I'm doing is contacting people and staying in contact with them and uh, letting them know what interest rates are probably going to do here in the next few months. We're already seeing an uptick in that where they're going up a little right. bit. Mm -hmm. And so you got to keep an eye on that for sure. Um, and then inform your people. I send out an email uh, to a lot of people who have contacted me in the past that haven't done anything, letting them know that, hey, interest rates are going up. So if you are going to do something, now is the time to do it. So pretty much the same thing, Joyce. Doing. So I brought up the pandemic last year. We woke up in face. And then right now, this year, and the pandemic's going away, but now we're looking at interest rates limited. Uh, and so really your answers from what I read from you guys or, you know, from what y'all were talking is that it's just getting up off your butt and working hard every day. So you, you fine tune and tweak a few things, but you just keep on pushing it. So there's really not a whole lot of difference. Yeah. Yeah. What it is. That's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. Yeah. Got to work it. Yeah. yeah. And rates ticked up a little yesterday. I, I didn't get to see where the bonds were this morning at 10, but it looks like they're actually above three a little bit this morning. And, and, uh, but I was telling Chase, my son that's in the mortgage business, he was like, you know, Hey, we're looking, you know, he'd lock one at 2.875 and they changed houses. So now he's going to lock it. It's probably three and an eight is their best rate. And, mm. and, uh, and I'm like, man, they missed out. And um, yeah, they did. so he's like, what are we going to do? I'm like, well, baby, let me tell you, I got into this business when rates dropped from 18 to 12 and the 10, I was building houses at nine. And, and uh, so, um, you know, rates still at four. If you go back and look a couple of years ago when rates were at four, three and a half, look at how much business you were doing. Uh, they're still going to buy houses. Uh, I think you, you know, with where the home prices have gone, it's going to make you adjust on where you look and what they can buy. Uh, but it's not making that big of a difference. So uh, coming from an old guy that sold houses at 12%, you know, I'm like, hey, man, we, we made a ton of money doing it. So, uh, and, and the good thing right now, too, is, is uh, you know, people are working, employment's up, and they're, they're and what's going to help you keep on even when rates are up is that, there's such a limitation on houses on what we can sell. And so you're still going to have a bunch of buyers looking and, and still buying homes. So it's not going to just shut us down. And so there's no plans or any market studies that says we're going to have a crash in this market anytime soon. 
everybody's looking at new home prices and where's it going to go and kind of joy what you said a while ago with hey this is what you can get for your house now i'm like hey man it's uh it is good but then where are they going to go what are they going to do how much are they going to pay for their new home and i think that's what's got a lot of people unsettled um, about selling their home but i do see it coming up i don't see interest rates slowing us down a little bit um, and that's the onslaught that i said well ago about the lower price point homes that the market's fixing to be flooded with a lot of that that's going to make up so we're going to have homes to sell um so i think the market's going to keep on going so so uh, all right miss julie it's question and answer time right now so who would you like never mind who else has a question before julie <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have a question also. <laughs> All right, Tony. Never mind, Julie. I got to let you answer mm -hmm. your question. So, so uh, I, sometimes he brings. You can let. You can let uh, Tony. I have go like ahead, three Julie. Questions. Sometimes you no, bring food like to the family questions. dinners, and oh my, God. I want to make sure it's good green beans or something. So, Julie, ask. Go okay, I have. First. I have three questions. I have three questions, Joy. They're coming at you. Oh, oh God. Why? Or, well, because they're personal. I guess they're personal questions. The first um, one's free, Julie. The other ones are $50 a piece. So, so. Oh, Randy, my God. Randy, if you'll hush, we'll be doing this in 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> Julie, how long have you been in the business? Mm -hmm. How long have you been in the business? Uh, it'll be 11 years in April. Okay. Uh, two, how do you, what do you feel is a healthy amount of contracts at one time? Or do you think that's just a personal? Mm, no, that's not a personal question. I was waiting on the third one. Oh, okay. Well, the third one is just, you're a mom of obviously kids. Um, yes. How do you keep, how do you feel like you keep a balanced life? Or do you feel like you are unbalanced if you're going to be transparent with all of us? Okay. All right. Good question. So for me personally, I don't have like an assistant. I do have, I use showing agents. So I do have uh, two showing agents. And um, I had to really beef that up last year because last year was truly one of my busiest years that I've ever had. Um, I came in the market in 2010 when it had crashed and I was like brand new, didn't know anything and hearing everybody talk about the glory days and it was like all these foreclosures, but I worked for a foreclosure broker. So that was in my favor. So I was very busy then, but last year was out of my control. So I had two showing agents that I used and I paid and I still use them now. So that is how I keep my balance. That's how on a Saturday, if I wanna, if my kid is having a basketball game or volleyball game, but I have a client that wants to see four houses then I use my showing agents and I pay them that money and cash out them and I'm at that game. So that's how I maintain my balance is that I know I can't do it all. And I, I recognize that. And, um, but last year was still busy. I mean, even my son, he was 16. He told me, he said, um, you're about to go to work again. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And he was like, he said, you're hardly ever at home. And it made me feel really bad. And so that's what I up the showing agents because even though he doesn't talk to me, even though he's not going to be around me because he's 16, but he, he wants to know I'm in the house. So I use them. And that is, you can't do it all as a parent, you know, especially as a mom, you cannot. And you have to recognize that. And so I use those showing agents. Um, my daughter is 12. She's with me a lot. She's my real estate assistant. Everybody knows Rachel. So Rachel is with me a whole lot. And that way, there's our connection with that. And um, I do sometimes feel out of balance. I really do. But that's when I have to take a break. Um, that's when I say, okay, I'm not going to work this Saturday. And I'll have the agents to show for me. For me, the number of contracts that I feel like I can manage on my own, and, and unfortunately, I'm not really great with my paperwork, but uh, the number of contracts I feel like I can manage on my own without losing it is 12. 
So I think anything over that, I started to get a little wiry, but so far 12 has been that magic number. Okay, thank you for answering those. I, October started my third year and I, it's just been lackadaisical the first two years, just trying to get my feet wet, um, not working at it very hard, really being a mom versus yeah. anything but this year has really picked up um I just I closed on two this past Wednesday but when I closed on those two it dropped me down to seven so I've had nine open which has been the most most I've ever had I got closing today closing Tuesday closing next Friday and I just feel like I we also have a daughter that's 15 at home um doing virtual school and mm -hmm. one I pulled out to homeschool, but have had since in the last month hired somebody to actually teach her at their house because okay. I felt like I was drowning in. And so to hear you say 12, I'm like, wow. So I've got to learn to keep that balance. I hope business does not slow down. Um, and it doesn't look like it is by the way the people are talking to me and asking me to come over and, you know, help, help them stage their house for, for listing, you know, in the next coming weeks. But um, nine was kind of overwhelming <laughs> for, for, for the start of my third year. Um, again, I'm thankful and I'm so blessed, but it's like, okay, Julie, you've got to back up and really find that balance so that I'm not answering emails at 845 and text it. I mean, I literally had an offer come in or, I mean, I offered that we submitted it like 1048 at night, you know, and so it's like, it's going. And I know that you seasoned agents who have been in it for 40 years, or like, yeah, Julie, that comes with the territory, but I guess it's just yeah. finding I've never been this busy. You know, I've had three under contract at, you know, at once, and that's been the most. And so nine's just kind of thrown me for a loop. Yeah, I had, uh, Julie, one thing I will say, oh, I'm sorry, Randy. One thing I will say, Julie, and this is to you know, not picking on dads, you know, I know, you know, y'all y'all do your thing too, but you know, <laughs> but for any moms, you know, out there. I had uh, a broker to tell me, you know, some years ago that you can't make all the money. And so what he meant by that, not giving your business away, but utilizing people to help you. So what that means is if you need to hire a transaction coordinator to handle your paperwork aspect, just so you will have peace, then that's what you do. You pay her or him that $250 and you get your commission and you move on and you get off on your taxes. Um, that's what I've learned to do. Um, because I, when you're drowning like that, we tend to get overwhelmed and you, you, you get all anxious and then we have to reach for the mix. And so, you know, to keep yourself clean, use that. Because if you're getting a three or 4,000 or 6,000 or eight, $9,000 check, what is 250? You know, that's sad. Yes. And my initial saying. thought, my initial thought when I heard that we get, had that option was like, heck no, I'm doing this on my own. But as these contracts have come into play, I'm like, mm, that seems sweeter every day. Yeah. Yeah. You have to keep your sanity because you have to be there for yourself and your kids and your husband, you know, if you're married or whatever. So, you know, you have to be there available. And I hate it when I'm like, on the internet, on the MLS, you know, all night. And I have barely talked to my, you know, my child or whatever, but I don't mind paying for the help I need. Now that I don't, I don't mind paying for the help I need. Hey, I was gonna mention a while ago, last year in Atlanta, uh, it was actually a year before that, there was a panel like this. And there was a lady on the panel that her team sells about 300 homes a year. And somebody asked the same question, Julie, that you just asked. And her answer was totally different. She's like, I put 17 hours a day into my business, seven days a week. She says, I've learned I can hire somebody to clean my house, hire a nanny. My kids love their nanny, just like their mother. And, you know, on and on and on of everything she hires out and let everybody know that her most important thing in life was to, to create a better life for her kids. Uh, and never even thought that she was talking about, hey, it's a better life without her in it, maybe. And so, uh, so I like what Joy said and, and about, you know, uh, spreading it out. And we have a lot of agents that's out here 
that, you know, they will step in and help you. Joy, it was probably not hard to find some helpers to come in. Uh, I have looked for some helpers and it's hard to find good helpers. But, you know, if you define that role of somebody that's just going to open houses, meet them and all that stuff, it's really not that expensive and probably not that hard to find some people to do that, is it? No, it's not because the way that I found the best showing agent and then she became so much more was I just put a post in the vest of Facebook group chat. I needed some showing agents and I got several responses, but I chose, you know, this one person and it's been amazing. That was over a year ago. and It has been amazing. So I think sometimes we forget when we're going, we got clients, we got showings, we got buyers, we got sellers, we got kids. You forget to utilize your resources that are right there. That's awesome. So that Facebook and, you know, just reaching out to people, even within your office. I mean, I've worked at a lot of offices, so it's not hard for me to, you know, go to an EXP page and say, hey, I need a show an agent and they'll know me. But we have a great, we have new agents at Avast that are just coming in that want this experience. They want to show a house because they don't have any buyers. So they want to show a house. So pay them that $25 or $35 and move on. Okay, thank you very much. Tony, you had a question? What's up? I did. My question is for Joy. Um, oh, you oh, said- sitting there just begging them. <laughs> <there. laughs> That's fine with me. <laughs> I talk to Mike all the time anyway, so you already know him. Okay. Next week's session is men only. So <laughs> right, right, right. Right. <laughs> okay, so my question is you said you utilize Facebook a lot. Do you use like Facebook ads or boosted posts or are you just like targeting towards the people that's on your page? Yeah, I'm targeting towards the people that's on my page. I don't the only thing I do, I pay for leads and it's almost like Randy said, I'm like, right now, I wish I could put this on hold, but I don't pay for ads. Um, I did that before. I've done that before with like Google ads and I paid for AdWords. To me, it was unprofitable. It was okay. some money. Um, and that's one thing that you have to know. And you know, you're going to try stuff out. It's okay. But when you see something that's not working, drop it, let it go. And um, I don't know how profitable those ads are. They may be for some people, but for me, it was just a total wash. So mine is just, you know, my people on my page. And oh, okay. uh, when I first started out with real estate, I may have had like 400 friends. And I think now it's over 2,000. And, you know, I don't know. But that's all I do on Facebook is real estate. I talk about real estate. That's it. Okay. Hmm. Any other Thanks. questions? That's the only question I had. <laughs> hey, this was an awesome uh, Mike and Joy. Thank you very much for your insight. It's y'all. I know you are busy and taking time out of your day to talk to us and share. Uh, I wanted to take time to announce um, a few little changes with the Bass. Is uh, we have hired a uh, Ashley Yarborough. Uh, her dad is Mark Yarbrough that does the uh, real estate school. Ashley is uh, coming in to kind of help me um, organize, build a little better foundation and better training programs. And then we've also hiring in Morgan Hodges that uh, was at Remax and is moving over with us as an agent, but also helping us write the team lead program and also taking in the new agents like Tony and bringing them in with a better training program. Our focus is turning on new agents coming out of the real estate school to get them and work them. Uh, just feel a, a huge need. Chris kind of led me there uh, with the real estate school coming in and just, you know, it's like, hey, it's an awesome opportunity to get in and teach agents uh, new things and how to grow their business and get in. And, and but the number one thing is it's got to be a lot of work. It's not just going to walk in and start cashing checks. And so uh, uh, we've also hired Nicole, a little girl that comes in that afternoon and she's going to start helping doing some stuff. But we got a lot of great things coming on uh, to grow. They will not be in a role that, hey, if you need somebody that they're going to be there, it's still going to be Audrey and Linda. 
and Chris and myself. And so I'm kind of bringing them in where they're not caught up in the day to day so that we can get these training programs written and marketing programs written and everything else that we've been working on. It's just that we're so busy with things uh, that we just can't get caught up to get it done. So those those changes are coming. Chris had something, what, Dr. Kitty, what? No, I was just going to say, I mean, let Mike kind of expand on the on, on training. So, okay. Right. Yeah, Mike, you had, I wanted you to expand because you've, you've actually turned some of your work over so that you can get out and sell. So kind of follow up with, with Joy's answer about having some help come in. Well, you can't do it all. You just can't do it all. And there comes many times when you just reach your wits end and you know you've reached your limitation and you have to have people to help. You've got to rely on other people. And uh, that that's a real salvation just doing that. Well, I've watched a lot of the top producers and watched Gusty Goulas back when he, before he made his move, uh, and was still at Realty South, he said that the hardest thing to do was to hire a, an assistant. And best thing he ever did was to hire an assistant and get help in there. Uh, because we sit there and watch our numbers and like, hey, you know, if I hire somebody, it takes money out of my pocket. But really, if you're a producer and Julie, if you've got the deals you've got working, it's going to boost your sales. Because if you sit there and, and, and nines your cap or sevens your cap, uh, then you're missing those five or six others that you could be selling and get your cap up because where Joy is now, if it's 12 or 13 to 15 uh, that she can handle with the team, then you can sit there and look at getting some people in. And, and it's relatively easy. Like we said, reach out to some agents. Uh, they will do it just for a flat fee to go do listings for you. And um, so, uh, y'all, Joy, if it's okay, some of them can reach out and, and you, Mike, as well. You know, just kind of come yeah, in. Absolutely. I think, I think the biggest thing is how much do you pay somebody to go open a door and, and you know, and help you out. And so, uh, so you're really, Joy, you're not splitting your commission with them. You're just paying them a fixed fee. And then Mike, yeah, so, well, you pay. Right. Yeah, for me, and I mean, I think the going rate for showing agents when I was at another brokerage was about $25 per house. Um, for me, I do 30 and then just being transparent, I do 30 um, because it's your gas, it's your time, and they're doing me a favor, and I appreciate that. So, you know, that's what I do. Um, and I mean, if they show five houses for me that day, it's 150. Yeah. It's, but when I get my commission check, I've forgotten about it. So, you know, yeah. I write it off and move on. And that's, that's just how I see it. And a good closing coordinator because we still have Ebony that does some for agents and she's excellent. You know, and it's two fifty a closing, so you don't even you know you don't it's not costing you anything until you close. So so right. people need to take right. care of that. And I have pitched for years is those of us that are salespeople, we're not good paperwork people. So hire somebody and spend somebody because you can double or triple your business and and uh, do what you're good at and don't try to do what you're not good at. So, so right. Right. 250. So uh, anybody else? Thank you guys. Uh, we've been right about it. We've taken an hour of Joy's and Mike's time and, and uh, it was very helpful to me. And so uh, all I'm going to do is start following Joy around and when she does a listing presentation, I'm going to knock on the door after. I'm just kidding. So, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking to my new construction and they're easier to deal with. And uh, I've got one buyer I'm dealing with right now and like I'm about to shoot him, so uh, mm -hmm. he's a good friend. But uh, so I, my heart goes out to you guys that chase buyers around every day because it's it's tough. So, uh, but it, it's very rewarding at the end of the day, not just because of the commission, but to see the smiles on their face. Like Joy said earlier, it's not about the money; it's really about serving and putting people in their homes and helping them find that special place. And and uh, you know, with Mike, it's money, but you know, he's not worried about the joy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a softy too. We all we are all in this and love helping our our you know our clientele out. So, so y'all keep up the good work, man. I tell you what, uh, y'all were neck to neck this past year. I didn't share numbers and not going to get. We're still trying to get back to a little have a little awards banquet and and reward you guys that that really worked hard this past year. But you know, 
you know, that's in the past. And so now 2021, y'all are starting a whole new race. So let's go and, and push yeah. it. And, new and, race. You know, the amazing thing to me is you yeah. guys are so busy that you take your time to help us out a little bit. So thank you very much. And we don't have any more questions. Uh, y'all have a great day. All right. Thank you. Thank you.